Hey, welcome back to the channel. I think it's gonna start. It's been, uh, what was it yesterday? Five yesterday and overnight I think it was five again. It's like 17 right now, maybe, maybe 17. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. I appreciate all the comments in the previous videos on how to make this bo battery box even better. The rubber underneath, good thinking, the drain, stuff like that. Let's see if we can solve some of that. We gotta get this started first. It's been brutally chilly, so this motor probably is not very happy. Does have plug in spots. And I probably should That started better than I expected. Huh. It's cold though. So no glow glow plugs. Um it does have two block heaters, I think. I've never really, I don't run it in the winter very much, so I don't worry about it. Somebody did right, and I like, I do try my best to comment back on the comments that I get, because um, I learn a lot, I enjoy that interaction. Why I want to flip it that way? I want to flip it that way because I can sneak right between here, and you can work on stuff. It. Yeah, I gotta put some rubber between that so it doesn't vibrate as much. If I flipped it going towards the tire, reaching those back batteries would be a little bit of a struggle. Let's go find some rubber, put underneath those batteries. That would be my first thing of attack. In here, in our old barn, like I said in previous videos, we use it mostly for storage. I got these old mud flaps. Cut a big section out of them and then we'll cut it to the right size. Oh. That might do it. We'll cut it to the right exact size. I just wanted to, I didn't want to have to pull that hole. That's wow. Gotta use some words here. So that was the mud flaps that were on the truck. I took that bar off when I built the float, put the floaters on and built the back. I gotta put flaps on um, to be officially legal, but I got American flag ones, so I'll use these for underneath the battery box. Alrighty, starts up. I ended up drilling three holes down here. Let water out if it comes in one down here. We're gonna put these on a mat. So, but. This all slopes this way just a little bit, so if there was water in the toolbox area, it would all go down to this side. The reason why I didn't put it right up against the edge is I'd be drilling through like three quarter inch steel to get it out. So that would be good enough. I really hope that I don't have much water actually in there, um, other than maybe from when we press washing. It seals pretty good. Got that rubber. Cut it all to size. I wonder if I can get it in there without taking these batteries out. Maybe. Let's find out. If I had more hands, probably. Which side looks better? That side looks a little better. We're all about looks here. I don't think this is gonna work at all. Or if I was extremely strong and could lift both batteries at once, then I just slide it underneath.
We're gonna have to take one out. We'll just pop this battery out and see. You gotta remember that's live. So you can't just set it on the metal without having sparks coming everywhere. That's your ground, so that can go wherever. But this. That needs to go somewhere where it's not going to touch metal. It might be harder than I think. Alright, let's try this again. Hey, it's way lighter with one battery. There we go. Look at that. You're stuck right to it. Alrighty. Got rubber flooring. That's pretty legit. I might cut another piece of rubber to go between the two batteries. So, let's see. Need two hands. Don't do that. Yep. Somebody did say I should line X um, around the box. That's some smart thinking. I probably should. That would prevent stuff like that where all I did was started to weld the battery cable that's brand new to the box. So that doesn't work out very well if you let that happen. You gotta keep in mind, this is all 12 volt. I'm not a big fan of electricity, but electricity I'm not a big fan of. It's high voltage, the stuff that when it gets you, you're possibly dead, laying on the floor. So, years ago, I put my hand on a uh, capacitor that was bad, and I woke up and I was laying on the floor. That wasn't a good time. And I was by myself, so that would have been even worse if I couldn't move. So let's get a piece of rubber to go in between those. Probably in between the back and in between there. Then we'd be good. Two more sections of mud flap. Oh, that is beautiful. Dang it. I put those wires back on and I gotta take them off to slide that in there without electrocuting doing good don't do that things not to do yeah things not to do maybe I can just no I probably should take my off Beautiful. Let's get down in here. So, let's see if we can see. So here's the back breather, right there. That's what's blowing out. And as you might be able to see, that's all soaked. Everything's soaked. And I kind of was wondering, maybe it was the seal here, but you would think You'd see more on the sides that's wet. So it's definitely coming from the top. So, right there, 
is the other breather. I'm gonna see if I can get in there. I don't know if you guys can get a good angle or not. Um, I wanna see if I can take that breather out. So what I've been struggling with is uh, you run it for a while and the back breather, which is the high-low, which, um, so this is a, it's a six plus one, which makes it a seven speed. You really just run the low speed. Um, you only, yeah, you only run low and one. I had to get a book to figure out exactly what it was. So you had to, you run low in one and then you got one and then you got the rest of the gears. It's got a weird shift pattern too. It's not too bad, but I wouldn't want to run it over the road all the time. Um, so you run it for a while and then you end up with this where, sorry, I get my gloves out of your face where it's all, it's been leaking out of the breather. So it's dripping down the transmission. So I took that breather out and the only thing logical that I can think of, and somebody else can drop a comment and I'm sure if I haven't figured it out by then, we're going to do whatever you guys comments are. But there's a breather up front in the main part of the transmission up there on the way left. I wonder if that's not working. So it's getting too pressurized and it's pushing fluid into the back uh, compartment because this is a separate part of the transmission. Well, it's two pieces, but fluid goes in between it. Um, and it's pushing fluid into the back part and then it's just creating pressure and it's coming out of the breather because it makes zero sense. There's only like... I don't know, six inches, no, four or five inches of fluid in the bottom. And the fluid is, I wish I remembered, it's a special fluid. Um, it's like $400 for five gallons of it, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, really crazy. You got to think a five gallon bucket of hydraulic oil is like 70 bucks. So, yeah. But I got to reach way up in there and see if I can get that out and see if that's dirty and making it so it's building too much pressure and then pushing fluid into the back and then having that issue. Because you can run it for a little bit and then it doesn't leak and then all of a sudden it, you run it a little longer and it starts leaking out of it pretty bad. So that's the plan. These are tight. Got rubber underneath it for everybody. Got to figure out what I'm going to get for tools for this side. Got to clean up all my scraps and stuff. Um, yeah. It is. It's not too cold, but it's definitely not in the conditions where I would say, hey, let's go have a party and work outside all day. But I'm trying to get some stuff done. I figured it would be good to let you guys see some more of this because, honestly, I got done editing those other videos last night being Saturday night and I figured it would be cool um, to show you what you guys are commenting on because a lot of people said to put some rubber underneath it and I agree um, but it definitely made made me get motivated to put some rubber underneath it Yeah, that's not it. I could blow through that. So something else is causing oil to get up and out of my um, breather. I thought this was gonna be an easy fix. I'm gonna have to do some thinking on this. If anybody's got any ideas, drop them in the comments. So where I got to so far is ruled out that it had anything to do with the front vent i just took off the back vent which you can see has liquids sitting in it from running and whatnot i believe they're tied together because when i fill the front it starts leaking like if this thing leaks all out it'll stop leaking which everybody knows it's always bad when something stops leaking and you didn't fix it so when i fill up fill up the compartment it leaks out the back more aggressively and it's nothing down here it's coming out of the top so I think I, I left the vent out I'm gonna start it up and just see if there's a ton of pressure there or if it's blowing out or what there's no other place that I could see to put the vent like if it's on the 
that side compared to being on the other side or what? Or maybe there's not supposed to be a vent in the back and it just is in the front. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. And it won't do it unless I'm driving the truck. So having that out doesn't make any sense either. Oh, having a moment. It is Sunday. Let me grab some rags. Um, I do have... This is I do have a book somewhere. I'm, I'm taking it. It's probably at my house. Um, the manual for this transmission. Since I bought it, so I could figure out exactly what it was. Um, since when I bought it, they said 5 plus 2. It was a 5 plus 2. And I was like, huh? So yeah, they had no idea what they were selling. <sighs> but, alrighty, I got one little leak. Let's see if we can button that up. Alrighty, got this little leak there. So you can see it's leaking over there from up that. And then this is leaking right here. So let's clean that up. I guess I did have the right wrench, but I'll get that tightened. Wow, that was really loose. What was I doing that day when I put that on? So that's the feed line to the pump itself. And I got a few more leaks under the hood I'd like to check out. That was really, really loose. What was I doing? There we go. That's much better. But as you can see, everything's damp and soaked from coming from up top. Just drips down the back. I'm gonna have to do some thinking. Just minor things to do now, like that's all damp around there. I don't know if it's the hose not tight or if the hose itself is going bad, but we're gonna try tightening that up. Well, we're over here. See, here's my block heater. Just goes into my coolant passage. And I just realized, remembered, that this bracket here isn't even bolted to anything. I keep forgetting that. It's my exhaust hang bra hanger bracket, one of them. What this line does here is just my return from my turbo. So the oil line return, here's your feed line coming up and going in and that's your return line. So I got this little leak over here, which I gotta get my gloves off. I wanna get some wrenches for, so I make sure it's actually tight. I don't know if I got the right size or not. Nope. Oh, amateur hour here. Drives me nuts when they have two different size things in the same spot. Absolute pain. Wow. You get the right size for one after six wrenches. And then the other one's even smaller. There we go. Just a little loose. I guess you guys can't see nothing with that line in the way. Make sure that I do get that up that top one tight. My last leak. And what I want to get out of the way. Well, we're actually going to we'll put something in between there so it's not rubbing on it. But if you can see, right there is damp. And then that drips down and it goes on the line down there. And then I think it's leaking oil. But... It's just ste power steering, which is actually oil anyways. But I would take it that it's damp right around that fitting. So I'll get that fitting off. We'll put some thread tape on it and we'll get it back in there. And then I won't have, knock on wood right now, I won't have any leaks on this truck. Other than that transmission, which I still... I'm trying to think about that. Got this loosened up, which by the way is in a very, very, very bad spot because you can't get anything into it. I'm sure that's why somebody put this together at some point and just sent it instead of making sure it doesn't leak. But I'm figuring this, oh, this is your reservoir for your power steering. 
and we've leaked some so i know we're lower than right here so we're gonna lose what's ever in there and then we'll put some back in but all for the greater good of making sure we have zero leaks on this truck and then once it stops leaking something else is gonna start leaking my mac on the other hand that has a few leaks and they're slow but everybody i talk to they're like it's a mac thing if it's not leaking then something's wrong i'm like oh yeah i guess so and what i don't think i'm gonna get around to putting a motor in that or freshening that motor up so hopefully i can get it through the spring um we'll see how much manure i actually haul with it and then uh then i'll give it some love we'll see how this year goes i'm way behind them as far as my projects losing motivation when it's freezing out but, gotta get it done right we'll see if we can get in here and get this out without making too much of a mess spot Try to see what I'm doing. Yeah, they put the injection pump in the air compressor and everything right above it. Engineers, I tell ya. Engineers. I should get loose enough that I can spin it by hand. And there we go. And in the bucket it goes. All I think it was doing was leaking down here at the bottom. Everything else was tight. So we'll just clean these threads up. Put some thread tape on it to help seal it up. Put it back on. Or pipe tape or whatever you guys want to call it. Everybody's got different terminology. There it is, back in. Ooh, this can's getting a little low. Let me clean it up. We'll run it for a little bit. Grab another rag here. And then I gotta figure out what it takes. Based on the internet, um, I'd say it's like 60-40, use what's in the motor or use engine oil. The rest is automatic transmission oil. We're going to use what's in the motor. So 15W40. And like I said before, a lot of people say that because if it leaks by a seal, your motor doesn't all of a sudden have transmission oil in it. Plus, if it runs low or leaks for some reason, you usually have 15W40 floating around. For some reason, it seems like we always have five gallons in a, in a truck or pickup or something sitting around. Like, it's good to check top things off. Even if the equipment's not leaking, which stuff leaks. Um, it's always good to top it off in the morning and check the oil. So we'll put some in, see how full we get. Ugh. 
doesn't take very much. That's got to be less than a gallon. I'm going to find my small jugs to go with it. We are way over full. Or we're blocking all the air or something. Or it's just wicked slow molasses. It is freaking cold out. But it does have a dipstick. It says how full it is. This is the smallest little nozzle for a funnel, but we haven't cut it off because we need it for things like this. Whew. I'm ready for spring as far as the weather. We're not on it yet. A little more. We'll have to run it to get the air out of that line probably too. Let's see. That's a good feeling that it starts that good. New batteries, new cables. Things are good. So, run the steering one way and then we'll run it the other way. I gotta make sure that drain pan's not in the way. Well, we're clear now. Making sure I didn't have any leaks. this off and just check it they definitely had some ATF in that prior doesn't mean it's the right thing for it so I'd be interested what do you guys run in the trucks well, that's a little overflow over full not by much but I'm sure a little leak out over sometime for some reason Hopefully we got those things figured out. They look good right now. But really running, it's going to be the time, testament of time to... What is going on here? Oh, rookie mistake again. I always do that. Because the GoPro gets in the way of... Or the this gets in the way of you guys seeing sometimes. So, the leaks. Hopefully we got those engine leaks figured out and that will make make me feel better about it i wasn't losing enough oil that i really felt bad um but it's those little things that just bother you you sit in there and you look under your truck and you got a little puddle not even a puddle some drip marks so hopefully three leaks figured out um truck charges now batteries are pretty good we got to put some you know what i forgot Whoever was uh, typing the comment, hey, you forgot to put the little guard there. <laughs> Come on. This might be harder than I thought with one hand. I really got to get a head headband like I was saying. Let's see if you guys sit on a tire. Nope. All right. What do we got going on? There we go. that's better so one day who knows when 
I would be cruising down the road and I'd blow that line and I'd just lose all my power steering. And then you're in an 18 wheeler with no power steering. Can be done. I just don't want to do it that way. So what that was, was Melco's. That's why I got a bunch of that stuff kicking around. I got some pulsation hose. That I'm probably gonna use on the edges of this and then on the inside. But we're gonna wait for a warm day and then we're gonna glue it in there so it stays. But I got the breather back on. I'm probably gonna send a comment or a question to the International, the S Series group. Um, see if anybody's ever come across that and wonder why it does that. Because I just, I don't know enough of them, en enough about them. But we'll get this thing out back. Best part is it freaking starts. We'll just get this parked out here and yeah, I think that'll be enough. I'm cold for the day. Chopper still needs some love before spring. We'll get to it. Needs blower paddles done. Might take that bigger head and get that fixed up. Um, and just have this as a spare. I'm just got two that are funky there. The bigger head will be, it's wider. Make life a little easier, but it's been run pretty hard. It does have hydraulic lift and stuff for this. So that makes it nicer when you're back and feet out when it plugs. Uh, this, is getting somewhere it's almost almost good to where i'm content with where it is i'm pumped that i don't have to use jumper cables any longer we'll shut that off because we're not going to run it for a few days but yeah i hope you guys are enjoying this appreciate all the comments um that's gonna do it for this video. We're supposed to get snow tomorrow afternoon, being Monday. So I'm thinking we're gonna have that bad boy back out and we'll have the mini loader pushing some. But they're saying anywhere from one to 14. So last time they said 12 and we got six. Um, so we might get none or we might get 28. Who knows? Because they don't even know. But hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. Um, That'll be the last of this truck for a little while. We do have to put street tires on so I can get an inspection sticker with them. Um, I should call them up and see if they'll let me inspect with the floater tires on. I should do that. I don't think they will. Maybe they will, Maybe probably not. Around here there's a lot, a lot of DOT and stuff like that so they don't let things slide. But I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so. Have a good one.